Welcome to Reanimator Reviews. I'm Ryan, and this is The Groom. And we just saw us in theaters yesterday, so yay us for seeing new movies. <laughs> yay us uh -huh. for seeing us. <laughs> yay us for seeing us, which of course is the second debut film from Jordan Peele. The movie starts out with a flashback from 1986 of Adelaide, is that her name? Mm -hmm. With her parents at the Santa Cruz boardwalk, where... You kind of get the impression that dad's a little bit of a deadbeat and drunk drunk, and not not really there to celebrate her birthday, which is, of course, the occasion. She is kind of watching him play whack-a-mole and gets distracted, goes down the boardwalk to the beach to the House of Mirrors. I forget what the name of that place it's was like called. like something myth, mystical forest or something like something that? Something like that. And while walking through creepy House of Mirrors, ends up stumbling upon an exact, like, version of herself, just with a real creepy smile. The last part we see of that is her standing with her eyes open really wide, and then she runs off. Flashback to now. And, uh, they're going, her and her family are going to her childhood home, or that's at least what I assume. Yeah, it was like her mom. I, yeah. I, I'm guessing the parents split up after that. And, the, and this is where mom lived, which is right by the Santa Cruz boardwalk. And they're there for a summer vacation, spring break kind of thing. And we get to meet her family, her husband Gabe, her daughter Zora, who is in Trek and Field, and her son Jason, who's kind of a weird kid that's obsessed with magic tricks and a wolfman mask that... We are kind of flip-flopping through the whole movie. Like, is it the Wolfman or, or is, is it, it Chewbacca? Chewbacca? Like, we're not really sure. I couldn't decide. But they end up going back to the Santa Cruz boardwalk to meet their friends, Kitty and... What's his name? Tim Heidecker? Oh, I forget what Tim Heidecker's name Tim is. Tim Heidecker. And, uh... Josh, I think his name is? Probably. Some weird stuff happens and she, it was Josh. Adelaide keeps getting these strange deja vu kind of vibes that something's happening, something's coming back. We learned that after the whole incident when she was a little kid, she was in therapy because she wouldn't talk from post-traumatic stress and has kind of never really come to terms with it. And she feels as though the little girl that she saw in the House of Mirrors has come back and is going to do something. And we'll just kind of leave it off there. As this is spoiler free, but if you've seen the previews, you know, like, it, they, they do come back. And it's mm -hmm. fucking weird, yes. to say the least. Okay, so, first off, what did you like about the movie? I really liked Tim Heidecker. Because I'm a huge fan of the Tim and Eric awesome show on Cartoon Network's Adult Swim. And I think he's great. He's just, like, he seems like he's a fun person to be around mm. in general and his character in this particularly in one part was so funny like he's kind of that drunk douchebag guy mm -hmm. throughout the movie what do you say it was vodka clock somewhere <laughs> which i can totally identify he's like, with he's like it's vodka clock but just later in the movie there there's a lot of funny things with him or kind of something like him there was a lot of uh, comedy thrown in here, which I appreciate. Uh, obviously, Jordan Peele's a comedian, so mm -hmm. he knows the craft. He knows what he's doing. I thought that was great. I really liked the practical effects that were in it. I don't feel like they overused CGI in this movie, which is really yeah. easy to do, and then it looks really cheap. But, yeah, that... <laughs> yeah, you could tell the one scene where I pointed out, I was like, that is a practical effect. Yeah. Because you could tell... You could definitely tell, like, that is actually practical, which is refreshing. Yeah. Or it was the best CGI I've ever seen. <clears throat> I do enjoy the the innovation of the, the premise of the movie. We haven't really had something like this before without mm -hmm. spoiling too much. It was different from it is movies an, I've seen. It is an original idea. Mm -hmm. I what did you like? I liked the, there was a underlying theme of symmetry through the entire movie, and I thought they did a very good job of putting it in the forefront and putting it in the background, making it very subtle, but also making it very obvious. Like, it was a really, it was a really well done underlying theme of the entire, entire, entire movie, and there's, you know, as the only thing, as the only 
my real my real favorite was the something that I can't I can't mention because it spoils the movie, but I laughed hysterically at it with the roller coaster part. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> but um I really I really like that. The symmetry. It, it was shot very well and the, the using the symmetry part of it. Another underlying symmetry thing that they didn't realize were uh Tim High High Decker's character's uh daughters were were uh, twins. Mm -hmm. So I think the one I just thought of it. It was just like there was a lot of it throughout this entire movie. And some some of it when you realize the sim the symmetry theme of it you go back to the earlier parts of the movie and you're like, oh my God, there it is. Like, you know, you realize that it's been there the entire movie. So I really, really enjoyed that. And the part with the Frisbee, when the Frisbee covered up the circle on the towel. I was mm -hmm. like, that now, now, I was like, now you're just being obvious. As someone with OCD, that part made me really happy because I was like, oh, that's so satisfying. Like, it just completely covers the circle. Mm -hmm. And I was like, ha. Ah. All right, so what didn't you like about the movie? I didn't like the fact that it was a bit predictable. I didn't like some of the pacing really bothered me. I thought, you know, it could have been cut down a lot. Some of it seemed unnecessary and a little dragged out. Some of the stuff in it you kind of called before it happened. Like there was a scene where Gabe is fighting um, a man and you can see the rope there and immediately your mind's like, oh, this guy's yeah. going to get tangled in the rope and get dragged behind a boat. That's just what's going to happen. Then he's going to pop up again, which he does. And you, you expect it. And I don't know if that's necessarily a bad thing, but it was predictable. And there were certain aspects that you're just like, oh, I know it's going to happen. And then it kind of takes the joy out of watching it actually happen, you know? The ending, I know both of us weren't super thrilled with. I call the ending very early in the movie. Mm -hmm. And I hate that. Like, I, the ending was obvious, but it wasn't obvious. You didn't know why. You like, you you knew it, but you didn't know why. So it was kind of, it was, I don't know. Ugh, that bothered me. The other, the other thing that absolutely bothered me was the wasted candy apple. Oh, yeah. When she's walking and she's walking around... Wearing this gigantic thriller shirt when she's a little kid because her dad won it for her on the boardwalk. And she's a candy apple with no bites taken out of it that she's just walking around with. And right before she walks in the, the house of mirrors, drops it like butter side down into the sand. And we're both like, oh, yeah, that just hurt bitch, me. you ruined that. Like. Give it to one of the drunk teenagers partying on the beach. <laughs> I'm sure they would eat that candy apple. Why is this a dislike? Why are we so obsessed with this candy apple? Oh, so mad. oh bonus like is uh, in the very beginning part of the movie when you, they tell you it's 1986. She's watching a TV and surrounding the TV are VHSs of... Chud. Chud. It was like it was good eighties horror movies surrounding the TV, and I was like, "That's good, that's good." I like. I I was like, if that was on purpose, that was good place. Oh yeah, that was totally on purpose. <laughs> I feel like it's it's got to be hard for Jordan Peele to write another movie that's going to live up or be better than Get, Get Out, out no. because Get Out, like in our opinions, we loved it. It was such I, a good, solid movie. It's an original thought. It was great and. You know, sometimes the second movie doesn't live up to the first one, but... Oh, the sophomore slump. It wasn't terrible. I mean, I can't wait to see what he comes out with next, because I really do like his style of filmmaking, and it was entertaining as hell. I really had a good time watching it. This is the thing, though. Everybody said this movie was terrible, and everything. it wasn't that bad. If I think this movie wouldn't get as much hate... If it wasn't Jordan Peele who made it. Or maybe if this was the movie that came out before Get Out. Ex 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 exactly. I'm like, just going to drink all the things around me. Yeah. If this was Jordan Peele's first movie, I think people wouldn't have given it so much scrutiny. But when you follow such a major, like like a banger, like freaking Get Out, that, that was a great movie. And, you know, he won so many awards for that and stuff like that. Everybody thought Very this was so. going to be just knock it out of the park and i think this is such a unique idea and like we we were talking about 
we were talking about different ways to end, end this movie on the ride home from the theater, and like any other any other way you end you end this, you're still gonna piss people off. Yeah. Like I came up with two other endings. And she's like, yeah, that would piss a lot of people off. I'm like, I know, but it like, would be yeah, awesome. it would be a logical ending, but people are still gonna be like, what the fuck? Yeah, it's you know. So I mean, like. I would definitely tell people to give this movie a chance, you know, because honestly, up, up until the very end and the ending being very obvious, every, everything else about the movie, I actually really liked it. I thought it was shot well. The underlying symmetry was great. The, the, the acting was phenomenal. Especially the kids. Usually I hate when kids are in movies because it's just like... The kids were They're smart. annoying or whatever, but like the kids in this movie had like really good personalities that they mm -hmm. portrayed they didn't do stupid things the kids actually were like like the heroes in this mm -hmm. you know because the kids came back well like you know the one part where they split up and stuff like that the kids end up help the kids are usually in almost every horror movie kids are a hindrance they're the reason people get killed you know but these kids were smart they uh they, they were both fighters they, you know, they, they, they fought back. They, you know, they did everything they, they were supposed to do and not be a complete, even the one kid who was like, probably like what, like seven or like six, seven, eight years old. Oh, he was older than that. I uh, think maybe, maybe like nine, maybe nine or two, but the, like the teenage, the teenage daughter was actually, was actually smart. Didn't like, didn't like leave her brother behind. The brother was smart in interacting with the other person. So it was like, you know, it was very unique to see kids actually like not be the reason people are dying and not mm -hmm. be a hindrance and actually help in the overall yeah. and thing like with it. Process <laughs> things logically it, with in a the, survival situation. With her driving. Mm -hmm. With the, her reasons why she said she should drive instead of her mom and her dad were on point and a, very accurate. She made a very good point. And in a crisis situation like that, where she's like, no, dad's this and you're this. So I'm, I'm driving. And it's like, yeah, you, uh, you, she's right. Yeah. So, but yeah, you know, I give this movie a chance, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's a fun, it's a fun, fun ride that stops abruptly and you're like, shit, yeah, I knew how this was going to end. But the but action I, scenes are oh, like, so good. Good, like the fight scenes so are really good. well choreographed. They're really believable for the most part. And, and there's, uh, there are good twists in it though. Mm -hmm. Unexpected stuff that it happens, and you definitely you should you definitely should should watch. There are unexpected things you don't expect. Unexpected th things you don't expect. Yeah, things you don't expect to happen do happen. All in between the you know, beginning and obvious, uh, obvious end. So, and the very creepy end of it. Mm-hmm. Very creepy. Very 80s. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> so, but yeah, it was, uh. What would you rate it? I would give this, I would give this a three out of five. And the reason why I give it a three out of, out of five is, honestly, if you're going to break down what you rate a movie on, you have to give it a point for the the intro, a point for the for the for the end, and then three points divided up for everything in in between with cameras and stuff like that, with cinematography and stuff. So I definitely deducted it a point immediately because of the way it ended, but I thought everything else was pretty good, you know. And the only thing there are a few parts that I didn't like, like you said, I think it was a little too long in some places. So I would definitely give it a three out of five, but this thing had, even if this was the best movie up until the ending ever, it still would only have gotten a four because that ending was terrible. What did you rate it? I'd probably also give it like a three out of five. I really, really liked the effects. They were really well done. They looked great. Everything was shot beautifully. I felt like the acting was really, really strong. I really liked also Gabe's character, um, how he would interact with his wife was really funny and like actually real. Like it wasn't just like a polished cookie cutter kind of <laughs> relationship. Inappropriate jokes. Yeah, they make jokes. They have fun together. You know, the one part when he's trying to lure her into bed and he's in the bed like, and then he realizes she's not into it and he's like, oh. 
There's someone outside. The radio part where he's like, I got five on it. It's like, this song's about drugs. It's like, no, it's not. It's not about drugs. It's totally, that song's totally about yeah. buying drugs. But he's trying to tell his kids like, no, no, this isn't about drugs. <laughs> and you totally, I totally relate, re- relate to that as a parent. Like you're listening to music and it's like very inappropriate, in a, in a, inappropriate lyrics. And then my kid from the backseat goes, what does that mean? I was like, nothing, 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 nothing. <laughs> nothing. DMX. We're just going to sit in silence. D DMX means nothing. Hold on, <laughs> but yeah, that I do, I do, I do, I love that. I think, I think the, I think the the actors were great together. And the, the like I said, the kids' acting was really strong. Um, I love Tim Heidecker. I think he's hilarious. I thought Elizabeth Moss's character Kitty was also great. Like they're kind of the couple that hates each other and has mm-hmm. a lot of money and vodka. Yes. Which is fine. I kind of hated their kids, the twins, but I think we were supposed to hate them. Yeah. They're just bitches. Yeah. We all know those teenage girls. Mm Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Yeah. Three out of five. Have you guys seen this movie? What did you think? Leave us some comments down below. We'll have a little convo about it. Um, I love Jordan Peele. I still haven't seen the Twilight Zone reboot because we don't have cable and... Uh, I'm still torn about watching it because I haven't heard the greatest things, but have you guys seen that either? Let us know. Like the video if you did like the video. Leave a comment down below. Hit the bell for all notifications of further uploads and live streams. You can find me on Facebook at Reanimator Reviews, Twitter and Instagram at Reanimator. Also, we have a podcast on iTunes courtesy of the Farsighted Network. Please also check out their creators. We're going to find you. You can find me on Twitter under Repeat Groom Ray. You can also find me on Twitch under Repeat Ray Animator, where me and my idiot friends play video games and try to be entertaining to the masses. Yep. You can just drink everything in this I'm going to drink all the liquids, but... <laughs> all right, I guess that about wraps it up. Okay. See thanks. you later, guys. Bye. Bye.